So if we look at that, you know, what does that mean, right? So what I, I need to know is what is my methyl directing at, right? So let's go through that list, right? So we had strong activators. That's going to be the ones with lone pairs like ox oxygens and metrogens. Then we have the moderates. What's in the moderates? Well, that's the alkyl groups, right? So we have moderate activators that are ortho pair director. So this is going to be an ortho pair director, right? Which means that I'm going to get two possible products. I'm going to get the bromine here, plus that's the ortho position, right? Plus I'm going to get the para here. Okay, so what we're adding to what we've already done in the chapter is now we need to think about our directing. So what's the regioselectivity of my starting materials? We did similar reaction with nitro. What would be the product with the nitro? And the nitro is a strong deactivating group. So that means it's going to be a slow reaction. And it's going to be a meta director. Is there any problem with a bromine working with a strong deactivator? No, it wasn't noted when we did that, right? What's the one we have to watch for? Our Friedel crafts alkylation and our Friedel crafts acylation, right? So bromination, that will go, but we just need to make sure we put it in the right place, which is the meta. So with my ortho and paras, right, I could have a chance of two products, right? And with my metas, I'm going to have one, just the meta. Right? Now, there's going to be a little bit of difference depending on the substituent groups, and we'll go over what some, one of some of those steric effects may be. Questions about these? Yes, ma'am. Oh yeah, it should be bromine. Sorry, bromine. Thank you. <laughs> Good catch. And what I was talking about, right, is if I try to do. Right, if I try to do a Friedel Crafts alkylation with a deactivated, strongly deactivated uh, group, I'm going to get no reaction, right? That's not going to give me a product. What happens is it reacts so slowly that that carbocation starts to react with anything else in solution. I can end up with alkyl chlorides, I could end up with al alcohols, I can end up with the carbons reacting together, but the aromatic is so weak. Uh, uh, nucleophile that it, that it, it uh, creates other things first. But, you know, if I'm looking at H2SO4, you know, fuming, this is still a reaction that can occur, right? So one of the things I need to watch for is the Friedel Crafts alkylation and acylations and strong deactivators. Right, so your nitro and your ammonium compounds. So let's try a couple.
Okay, so let's take a look on the first one. Let's do the first one, and I'll give you a little bit more time on the next two. So in the first one, right, we have the OH, right? The OH has the lone pair. So this is a strong activator, right? And it is ortho para directing. The HNO3, H2SO4 adds a nitro group. And for space, I'm gonna turn this up, right? So I'm gonna get the nitro group here. And I'm gonna get the nitro group here. Okay, let's take a little bit more time on the next two. Because the OH is not very steric, I don't see much steric effects, right? So I'll see both of these in pretty good uh, amounts. And the bottom one I meant to be a benzene. So sorry about that. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. So here again, what we're looking for, we're going to add an acyl group, but I need to know what. What's my substituent? My substituent is a mild, or sorry, moderate, that's the way the book put it, moderate activator, right? And that moderate activator is an orthopara director. So again, I'm gonna turn it up for space. So I've got my nitrogen species there. I'm gonna add my carbonyl in the ortho, ortho position. Right, or I could have added the carbonyl to the para position. The last one, now I have a weak deactivator. But what is it directing? Because of the lone pairs, just like this one and that one, right? This is going to be an ortho para director. So halides, remember, are deactivators, but orthopara directors. And so again, here, the products I would get would be the ortho. And again, the bromine doesn't have much sterics here. All right, so there's that type of question where there's one group on there and you're directing it. The other kind of question is developing the synthesis, right? So finding a target material, so retrosynthesis, and there's one of these on the online homework. And the online homework didn't show the large arrow, but I'd like to show the large arrow. So we're going to develop a retrosynthesis, right? So that's what the big fat arrow means, meaning that this is my target material. This is what I want to come up with a synthesis for, and this is my starting material. Now to analyze this one, I've got two groups on there, so I could add one group or the other, right? So what I want to do is I want to think about what I have here, right? And this is gonna be para, so that's my target. My target is para, but I also need to look at my two groups that are attached, All right? So the methyl group is a moderate activator, right? And it's what type of director? Ortho and para. The methyl is what? It is a, I mean, the chloride is what? A weak 
deactivator, right? And what type of directing? Ortho para. So in this case, could I add either of those groups and still get a para as one of my possible products? Yes. Now, don't get hung on hung up on the fact that you would also get ortho, right? So if your target molecule is a para, you're also going to most likely get some ortho, okay? Unless the question specifically asks you to make the para without the ortho, don't let that bother you, right? You're going to get some ortho. Same thing if the question asks for more ortho. If it asks for ortho, you're going to get some para, right? We will get to very selective, but in this question, all I'm asking is how could you make this? So either of these I could add first, but which one do you think you would want to ask for, add first, the activator or the deactivator? Which is going to make the reaction most likely go better? Deactivating the ring to electrophilic aromatic substitution or activating the ring? Activating the ring. So if I had a choice here, which I do, I would want to start my synthesis, right? You got to start with your synthesis with the benzene. But the first thing I'd want to do is add my methyl, which I can do with the ALCL3, right? Friedel Crafts alkylation. And then the second step, I'm going to add my chlorine, right? And ALCL3, my Lewis acid. And that's going to give me two products. Right? It'll give me the ortho, plus I'll get the para, right? So that's my target. Questions about this one? Okay, let's try another one. This one, I'll give you a little time to write down what you know about it. So think about what's being substituted in there and how you're going to go about it. See if you can come up with a synthesis. Let's take 45 seconds. So if we look at this one, make some notes, right? We know that a meta director is a strong deactivator, right? And it is a meta director. So nitro is a meta. This is an alkyl group. An alkyl group is a moderate activator. Right? And the more you write this stuff down, right, the better you're going to learn it. And that's going to be an ortho para director, right? All of our activators are ortho para directors. Okay. And our product is what? Product is para. So which one has to go first? That one's going to have to be first. This one will have to be second. If we added the nitro first, then we couldn't add the other group para. So in this case, it's very obvious, right? I have to add the ortho para director first to get the nitro para. If I add the nitro first, then I'll get the other group. If it was possible to add it, I'd get it meta, okay? So lay out the synthesis. We can do the Friedel Crafts acylation. I mean, alkylation, ALCL3. Right, we add that isopropyl group, 
Then we can add our sulfuric acid and nitric acid to give us the nitration. Now, in this case, I do have a big bulky group here. Right? And so for the alkyls, once I start to branch, I start to cause some change in directing effects. Right? So this has got a steric directing effect, which means that this para is my major product. I'll still get some of the ortho, but the ortho will be a minor product. So as I go from primary groups to secondary to tertiary, I increase the sterics around that and I drive more of it to the para, right? So if this was a big T-butyl group here, there would be less of the ortho. In fact, probably just traces of the ortho. Right. And remember, there is a statistic advantage to ortho over para. You got two ortho positions for every one para position. So when you don't have sterics impacting, it's usually a two to one. Here, you've shifted enough to where you get a major is the para. Okay. So introducing sterics into the, into the equation. Okay. Questions about these? Okay. The plan is just to continue to work some of these. Yes, ma'am. We could have used the primary and it would have rearranged. Yes. So the primary or this one would have both given us the same product. Okay. So let's try another one. This one's a little tricky, but let's see if we can, if you can figure out what the trick is. Again, I'll give you about 45 seconds. Think about it, write down the stuff that you know about this one. When it passed 45 seconds. Okay, so here, if we look at this one, the alkyl group is going to be what? It's going to be an orthopara director, right? Moderate activator. The bromine is going to be an orthopara director and moderate and a weak deactivator. Okay, but what's the problem here? The arrangement's meta. So, how do we add these two groups? Meta. Well, do we have to add the alkyl group as an alkyl group? Could we add it as something else and then turn it into the alkyl group? Yes, right? We know that if we take and do a friedel crafts acylation, right? So if we take this and do the friedel crafts acylation, I can end up with this group, and then I could reduce that group with zinc, amalgam, HCl, right, and some heat to give me the alkane. So remember that one from chapter 17, right? We can do the Friedel-Crafts isolation, and then we can do the reduction of that side group. Oh, I'm sorry, that was in chapter 18, right? And what do we know about the middle? This is what kind of director? Meta director, right? So therefore, do you get the bromine, the alkyl group, meta, what are we gonna be doing? 
going to be adding our carbon structure as the alkyl group, as the acyl group, and then we'll be reducing the acyl group, adding the bromine, and then we'll reduce it down, right? So what we're going to do is add the group that needs the directing effect. So this gives us the right carbon structure and leaves the correct directing effect on it. Then I do my bromination with the FeBr3 and the bromine. That gives me my meta arrangement. And then I reduce off the carbonyl with the mercury uh, zinc amalgam, HCl and heat. to give me my product. Questions about this one? Yes. Then you would end up with the orthopara, right? So if you had, if you had done this, oh, let me walk through it, right? So if I had done, so the, the, how you do these things, right? So if I go to this group, so this is the question. What happens here if I would have gone ahead and reduced that group, right? Down with the mercury amalgam to the alkane. Well, now it's an orthopera director, right? So when I do my bromination, so what you're, when I do my bromination, I get the, Ortho para products. Yes. The NBS would would add to the benzylic position. So here, what I'd want to do is I'd want to do this without light, right? So I, I you don't really have to do it in the dark because you need UV light but I'd want to make sure I didn't do this in a window. So if I had a radical, I could get uh, benzylic br bromination, but without a radical, I'm not going to get benzylic bromination. Is that your question? Or did I give you an answer to a question you didn't ask? Okay, yeah. All right. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you is different examples. So here's an example of adding a directing effect and then backing away from that. Right. So what we did was we it looked like we couldn't get a meta, but we could do a meta, get the directing effect and then back away from it. OK. All right. Let's try another one again. This one, I'm going to add a little bit of caveat to it. And I'm going to say only. And for this one, I'm gonna go, this is a, the last one was kind of a, a, trying to figure out, this one's called a block, D block. So in the book, this is under blocking positions. So if we look at this one, right? The nitro is a meta director and the Alkyl group is an ortho para director, so we're going to have to add the alkyl first. But the caveat on this one is I only want the ortho. But with an isopropyl, what do we know about the sterics? The sterics would favor what? Ortho or para? Para. Right. So therefore, Whatever I'm doing here, it's going to give me major para, right? That's going to be my major product because of the steric effects. But he's the question is asking the, the target molecule I need to make, they want ortho only. Why would this be important? Well, let's say this is biological, right? We're in a pharmaceutical company and the ortho is helpful and the para kills somebody, right? So you don't want to make any of the para, right? You only want to make the ortho. It's not even good to have that option. 
right? And so what we do here is we're going to add something that we can take off later. Of our aromatic reactions, which one can we add and then take off? Romination? No. Nitration? Yes, but not the way you think, and I haven't shown it to you yet. Right, alkylation, no, we're making our carbon-carbon uh, bonds. That's gonna be really hard. Acylation, no, carbon-carbon bonds, really hard. Sulfonation, yes, sulfonation could be added and removed. Remember when we covered that one, I said we're gonna be using it later. So what we're gonna do in this one is the first thing we're gonna do is add the sulfonation, right? So that's H2SO4, right? We can put fuming. We could also put uh, SO3 there. Right, that's going to get me this as my major product, right? Because of the sterics, that'll be the major product. I can isolate that. Once I have it isolated, then I can go and do HNO3 with sulfuric acid. Then we get this only, and that takes some explanation. So let's let's look at that down here. I'm sorry that I drew that benzene sad, but I didn't mean to. So this this alkyl group is what? That's an ortho para director, right? What is the sulfonate? The sulfonate is a meta director. Right. So let me change my colors here. Meta director in red. So where is the meta going to be directing? It's going to be directing here and here. Where is the ortho para going to be directing? It's going to be directing here, here, and here. Right. The para is blocked. So it's the ortho. And what do we see between these two? We see synergy. Right. They're both pointing to the same group. Right, so I'm not having to worry about competition. Everything is directing to the same point. Okay. So we go back up here, we get that nitro group. It only goes to one position because we got the symmetry between the two groups. And then how do we get the sulfonate off? We use sulfuric acid again, but now dilute. So that sulfonation is reversible by just using the same acid, but adding more water. Okay, so low water, high concentration, like the fuming, it's going to make the sulfonate dilute. It takes the sulfonate back off. And again, this is an example of a blocking of position. Questions about this one? Okay, let's try one more, and this one I'll give you 45 seconds to see what you can come up with. Okay, on this one, right? They're both meta directors. Okay. But what do we know? We know that a Friedel Crafts won't occur. with strongly deactivating groups, right? 
And what do we know about the nitro? Nitro is a strongly deactivating group. We know that because the nitro has a full positive right outside the ring, All right? So therefore, which one of these do we want to do first? Well, since the Friedelcraft's acylation can occur in the presence of nitro, we want to do it first, and we want to do the nitro second. So go first step, Friedelcraft's acylation. Second step, All right? And because it's meta, we don't have to worry about having two different products. We're gonna have symmetry on these, okay? Questions about this one? Okay, so everything above that line, right, is going to be exam one. So this is dye substituted. That's what I was talking about. So chapter uh, 1811 through the dye substituted. Now we're going to start looking at some tri substituted and multi multiple substituted groups. Okay, that'll be on exam two. We'll do that to finish out uh, this part of the section, and then we'll start doing some review for exam one, and I'll let you know when we get back to review. So whenever we have two groups, right? And we've already foreshadowed this a little bit, right? When I have two groups, the question then is, what's the directing effect, right? And is that gonna give me more products? Am I gonna have synergy? Am I gonna have comp competition, right? So if we look at this methyl here, it's gonna be pointing to this position, that position and this position, which is occupied, I don't have to worry about it. And then this methyl is going to be pointing to this position, this position, right? And that position, which is occupied, I don't have to worry about it. So here they are not, um, not aligning, right? So, but what is the advantage in this molecule? I've got symmetry. Right, so I've got symmetry, which really makes those four positions what? All the same position, right? If I'm only gonna do one nitro group, all four of those is the same position. So therefore the product of this, no matter which position it goes on will be this. All right, so happy, happy life, symmetry is beautiful. We only get one product. Another case, right? This is like the one we had before. We have the CH3 here. Let's say we have a nitro group on the other side. Okay, so if we look at the methyl group, the methyl group is gonna be pointing to the ortho positions and the para, but the para is occupied, so I don't have to worry about it. And the nitro is going to be pointing where? Nitro is a meta director, so it's going to be pointing here. I have symmetry right down the middle, although I don't have it vertically. So both of the ortho meta positions, we have synergy. So the answer to this one again is Is, that, is this, right? I only get one answer.
Okay, so first one, we have competing, but it's all symmetric. Second one, we have synergy, right? They're pointing to the same place and we have some symmetry. The next one, now we're having competing. Here we've got the OH, right? That's going to point to ortho para. The methyl group is also an ortho para. We have symmetry horizontally, but not vertically here. So that means that we have two positions. So if we're looking for the major product, what would we want to consider? which one's the stronger activator, right? So if we look at the activation for these two groups, this is a strong activator, right? This is a moderate activator. So the strong activator is going to be the one that's going to be um, driving the reaction, the products. If you think about it, it reacts faster. So this would be the major product. Questions about these? Okay. So your possibilities, right? Everything just lines up like the first two, either we got synergy or we got symmetry. You only have one product. But if you do have competition, right, then you need to look at the strength of your activators. That's why it's important to know strong activators, moderate activators, weak activators, and then weak deactivators, moderate deactivators, and strong deactivators, right? That's where that strength of activation, deactivation come into play, right? We do have one thing we need to watch for, which is the problem with acids and aniline. So if I have fuming nit sulfuric acid and react that with aniline, once I've done all my workup, I'll end up with meta product. This is not what I would expect, right? This looks wrong. But if we look at the reaction, what's occurring? Well, aniline, right, is an amine. And what's the first thing that it means going to do? The first thing that it means going to do is pull off a proton. Right? So the amine of the aniline, the NH2, is a good base. So therefore, I put it in a strong acid, it's going to get protonated. So when it gets protonated, it changes from a activating, strong activator, ortho para director to what? Strong deactivator, meta director. This is not a problem if I have um, Lewis acids like uh, bromination or chlorination or Friedel Crafts acylation, but it is a problem if I'm using nitric and sul or sulfuric acid. In those strong acids, the first thing that happens is I protonate my amine. Then when I do the next step, right, I get the direction here, right? And then with my workup, and of course these are strong acids. So what are you gonna try and do with a strong acid to work it up? 
You're not going to leave it a strong acid. You're going to neutralize it. What happens when you neutralize it? This goes back to the free amine. So for anilines, one of the things you want to watch, right, is this problem. And you'll see that this in some of the advanced problems in this chapter. We'll see when we get to carboxylic acid derivatives, there's, there's a way to protect this and then deprotect it for this reaction. But for right now, this is it's it's important to bring it to your attention because it doesn't give you the directing effect you would have expected. All right, questions about that? All right. All right, we've already been doing some review, right? We've been reviewing all the aromatic reactions, but now let's go back to chapter 16 and do a little review from 16 and 17. Okay, in problem form. So let's see. So on the first one, give me the products and identify the kinetic and the thermodynamic product. On the second one, give me uh, the products. We'll add a little heat. And give you a, a minute and a half or so to, to work on these. All right, let's take a look. Okay, one of the things that's important, and I've, I've been getting questions from, from, from you, to, you know, how do I go on the exam? One of the things is, that's very important is to know the difference between knowing versus solving. Okay, where you're gonna get a lot of anxiety is if you, uh, if you go into this test thinking you're gonna know the answers. That's not the way this works, right? You're going to solve for the answer, right? You're not going to look at the test and know the answer as soon as you see it. Almost never will you do that in this class, but you will solve for the answer, right? It's a slight change in the way you think about the class and the content, but it will keep you from getting very anxious. So if you read a problem and you see A, B, C, D, E, and none of them just pop into your memory as the answer, that's not the way it's supposed to work anyway. 
It doesn't mean that you're not smart. It doesn't mean you didn't prepare. You're going to solve for it. Okay. So if we look at the first one to solve for this, we need to think about what's happening. Right. And we need to think about the fact that this looks like that looks like a nucleophile. Right. That looks like an electrophile. And that means the nuke file is going to attack the electrophile. Leaving grief is going to leave. So let's look and see what that looks like. And again, it's, I'm talking now, but this doesn't take that much time to do. Okay, so if I add my H here, I'll get my carbocation there. And then, okay, I can get a rearrangement. This looks familiar. So I can get another resonance contributor. Oop, and I change colors for some reason. It's all right. Okay, and I can get that one. Is that the only possible place we could have added the H? No, I could have added it to the top, right? So let's do that one. We'll add this H up here, get the carbocation there, right? But then this can rearrange. Okay, so is it A, right? Or is it B? Well, again, solving for it, how do we know which one is, it's gonna be the most stable one, right? Here, I've got a secondary, here, I've got a tertiary. Here I've got a secondary, here I've got a secondary. Is it gonna be A or B? It's gonna be A, right? Tertiary is more stable than the secondary. Okay, so that's my first addition. So therefore I'm going to add then, and again, I'm taking up space and time and you're free to have paper at home to work these problems. So bromine, right? is gonna go back in and attack that. So this gives me my one, two product. So this is the one, two addict. And then this carbocation. And if you take a whole ream of paper and you write big like I did and you waste all that paper, don't worry about it. You can recycle it later. That's what it takes to get the right answer, do it. And this one gives me the one for addict, right? And addict just means version, right? Okay, so which one of these two is the kinetic? Kinetic is easy. What is the kinetic? The kinetic is going to be the one, two. Right? Why? Proximity and a lower energy of activation. The proximity gives me a lower energy of activation, therefore it's going to be the one form the fastest. Okay, what's gonna be the thermodynamic? Thermodynamic is looking at stability. Stability of what in this case? Stability of my alkene. So this alkene, how many substituents do I have? I have one, two, three. So this is a tri substituted, right? On the second one, what do I have? One, two, this is di substituted. Which of these two is more stable, the tri or the di? This one is more stable. So therefore, what's my thermodynamic? This is my thermodynamic. Your kinetic is going to be your fastest. That's a lower energy of activation that's based on proximity. So therefore one, two always wins out. Thermodynamic is based on the stability of the product. The stability product you're looking for is the stability of the alkene. So therefore the more substituted is going to be my thermodynamic. In this case, the thermodynamic and kinetic product are both the same, the one, two. That's not always the case, right? One, four is often thermodynamic as well, right? In fact, I'd say, more of the problems you'll see are that, but all you need to do is look at your double bond and figure out which one it is. Okay, again, solve, not know. If you overgeneralize the answers, you'll make a uh, simple mistake. Okay, this last one, I'm looking at my two groups. I've got some regio selectivity here. To know how this works on the regio selectivity, I'm going to need to show this. All right. 
So what I did was I moved my loan pairs down to show the residence contributor over here. I can move the electrons for the nitrogen down and I can end up with this, which means for the regional selectivity for this one, this Dills Alder will go together as I have shown it. Like this. And that's because I want to align my partial positives, and partial negatives. Okay, questions about that one? Okay, let's try a couple more. So we have the diene. Give me the diene and the dienophile. Oh, sorry. You can either have the lone pair or the proton, but you can't have both. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, let's take a look. So in the first one, right, we need to think about how we're gonna split this up. So we can look directly across Okay, from the double bond, and this isn't mechanistic arrows, this is just the way to work it. So look directly across, and then I'm gonna break above and below, right? That thing gives me my structure, but my diene, that's the one that had the double bond, and my diene no file, that's the one on the other side. Okay, second question. What's reacting from this one with an electron withdrawing group on my dienophile and an activating group on my diene? What would be the standard Bill's Alder reaction? Which one of these is reacting with the HOMO and which one of these is reacting with the LUMO?
This one is the HOMO, right? The highest unoccupied molecular orbital. And this one is the LUMO. So by adding electrons to the HOMO, I'm trying to increase its energy. By deactivating the LUMO, I'm trying to decrease. So I'm trying to bring the two closer together. Okay. And again, the HOMO and LUMO is important specifically in our pericyclic reactions um, because we don't have the radicals. We don't have the electron uh, deficiencies like we see in the others, right? It's a direct HOMO LUMO. Now, Turns out those are homo-lumo reactions, but this one only can be explained through the molecular orbital uh, process. Okay, and the next one, the first one is aromatic, non-aromatic. Aromatic, right? I have a continuous pi system. It is planar, six-membered rings, planar. The lone pair, is the lone pair part of the, of the uh, pi system? No right? Because it's going to be in my sp2 orbital, right? Why? Because I already have the p occupied by the double bond. So that one is aromatic. The seven membered ring, aromatic, non-aromatic, anti-aromatic. Well, here I have an sp3 carbon. So does it have a continuous pi system? No. So therefore it's non-aromatic it would behave as a conjugated diene. The last one, do I have a continuous pi system? Yes, there's not much a three member ring can do, right? It's gonna to have to be planar. I have an sp2 there, sp2 there, sp2 there. What about my Huckel's rule? Do I have n plus two? I mean, uh, four n plus two? Well, four n plus two. What if n was zero, right? That would be four times zero plus two would be two pi electrons. So does it have two pi electrons? Yes, so it's aromatic. Okay. Yes. The uh, one in the middle would be a conjugated pi system and behave as such. The trilogue one would behave as an aromatic. It has a con uh, it has a continuous pi system because of the positive charge. If it had the negative there, it would have a it would have potentially potentially a continuous pi system, but it would have the wrong number of electrons. It would be anti aromatic. Okay. Right? Questions about this. Okay, any questions? We got time for probably one or two more. Any types of questions you'd like to see? Yes, sir. N is zero, it can be anything, right? So N is any, any integer. So it can be zero, one, two, three. So if it had been zero, right? If then the Ruckel, Huckel's number of electrons would be two, right? So I just put zero in to show that I could have two pi electrons and that would meet Huckel's rule. Okay, so it doesn't relate to anything. It, it's a hypothetical, but it has to be a whole number, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. So if you do four, four times four, 16 plus two is, is 18. 18 pi electrons would be Huckel's rule. Because two pi electrons is in that series. So the four n plus two is just defining a series of numbers. So instead of remembering two, six, 10, 14, 18, right? We learn this formula, four n plus two. This four n plus two is going to give us that series. Right, so if you knew two, six, 10, 14, 18, 22, 26, you get why we use the formula? Yeah, okay. Okay, other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, let's do one.
Okay. So give me the products of this, right? And then tell me which one is the kinetic and which one is the thermodynamic. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so one of the things to remember is that you always want to add your electric file to the outside. Why? If you add to the outside, you have a conjugated double bond, uh, carbocation. If you add to the inside, you get an isolated carbocation, right? Now, in this case, both of those are the same. So we have symmetry. So I don't have to worry about which one I'm adding to. So I'm going to add the bromine here and that'll give me this carbocation right and then i could get and i hope you will give uh forgive me for not drawing the bromineum ion right so we get those two and then the bromine comes in and attaches so we get this one right plus this one And if we add that's our one, right, then this is going to be one, two, and this is going to be one, four. So wherever you add your first electrophile, that's your one position. And then you just count from there to get to the other. Okay. So now which one is kinetic? Kinetic is the fast one. The fast one is driven by the lowest energy of activation. The lowest energy of activation is the one that had the proximity. So that one's this one, right? Which one is our thermodynamic? Now I need to evaluate, right? So on this one, if we look at this one, we have a dye substituted Here I have what? Dye substituted. So thermodynamically, what's the thermodynamic product? Both of those are thermodynamic products. So the stability difference between these two is relatively the same. So therefore, both one, two, and one, four would be the products if I had tried to get thermodynamic conditions okay 